Hi everybody, welcome back to Art Made Simple. It's such a pleasure to have you back. Boy, I know I've been gone for a very long time, but you know how it goes sometimes. Sometimes our device is failing us and it takes a while for us to bounce back. So I got a new computer. But the computer that I got was a Mac. So you know how that transition period goes. Now all the programs you have on the computer that you, the PC that you had before, can work on the Mac. And so there's a little disconnect there. But nevertheless, I worked something out so I'm able to make videos again. So today I'm going to be teaching you about tie and dye. Now tie and dye is one of the oldest form of fabric decorating techniques around. It's been passed on for generations and persons generally develop new variations of the technique as time progresses. Now tie dye is basically a resist dyeing method. Resist meaning that a barrier is created between the dye and the fabric to protect a particular area from getting soiled or stained by the dye. Alright, so there are a number of resist methods but the tying is the resist method for tie and dye. Alright, so we're going to be looking at a number of patterns today. Well, four really. We're going to be looking at variations of these different techniques. So I want you to pay close attention and select the one that you like to do and you can explore. Now remember, there are a number of variations to tie and dye. So these techniques are not the only way to do tie and dye. And these aren't even the only variations of the techniques that will be done in this video. So some persons might see a particular technique and say no that's not the way it's done it's a totally different one remember there are different variations of the techniques so don't stress yourself about it being one done one particular way so for today's video you'll definitely need protective clothing so make sure you grab your overalls grab your protective gloves and so on because dyes do stain they stain skin they stain nails and they stain clothes so ensure you protect yourself from the dye you're going to need a couple of items for today's video, but I'm going to show you that soon. Today's video is going to take the format of a little short lesson and a tutorial, followed by a tutorial. All right. So if you have any questions, you already know what to do. Let's get started. Let's have some fun. All right. Catch you. All right. So like I said, we're going to kick things off by talking a little bit about tie-dye. Alright, now some persons call it tie and dye, others call it tie dye, but it really doesn't matter, it's one in the same. Now tie dye or tie and dye is a resist dyeing method in which a knot or a tie is used to create a barrier between the dye and the fabric. Now the patterns are created when the barrier is done tight enough to prevent any dye from getting to the area. Now, when that is done, you will find that a pattern is created by the areas that have dye and the ones that don't. So, nice and the contrast and patterns are created there. All right. So, that's essentially what tie and dye is. Okay. So, before we can get started with our tie dye, there are some things that we need to know. All right. Now, I've listed a few of these things here. So, we're going to talk about them. So, first of all, the fabrics. Only natural fabrics can be used for tie dye. That is because the natural fabrics generally absorb the dye the best and they are easier for the dye to stain. The man made or synthetic fabrics generally have a natural barrier, for want of a better word, a natural barrier to the dye. And so they will naturally resist the dye. And regardless of how long you submerge it, you will not find the dye sticking to the fabric. Which brings us to the next thing, which are the dyes. Now the dyes are generally unique and so the instructions that you will see on one dye or the method that you use to dye the fabric for one particular brand may be different for others. You'll also require an activator for some brands. Some activators include salt and vinegar while some brands naturally have or the activator built in by the company and so you don't need to add any. So, your instructions or the, the, the methods for each dye may differ. The next thing that you must pay attention to is the tying part of it. Now the tie is really important because it determines how the pattern comes out, how sharp the contrast is between the, the area that is exposed and the area that is not exposed and you want to ensure that it is properly done. 
having the tie too tight is just as bad as having it too loose it will affect the overall pattern and you don't want no dye at all to be able to get there because it will not give you a nice design all right the next thing you need to wash the fabrics before you start now washing the fabrics is important because most manufacturers give a nice coating to the fabric to protect it from insects while it's at the factory you want to remove that waxy coating so that you can ensure that the dye is the fabric is fully exposed for the dye to get to it because that wax will create a barrier and a resist again and prevent it from dying finally shrinkage shrinkage is a thing that we normally see happening especially with cotton once the material is exposed to water when you wash it it may shrink so don't panic if you see the fabric gets smaller all right now that we know a little bit more about tie-dye we can start to talk about the materials that we need for tie-dye all right so let's look into the items that we will need so we're going to need fabric natural fabric of course natural fabrics include cotton that's the one i would recommend cotton but you have other natural fabrics such as wool etc but we're focusing on cotton so i would recommend calico it's a very cheap and easy one to access so white calico should be fine we're going to need fabric dye, two or more colors, any brand is fine. Strings or elastic bands as well as cords can be used for this part, but however, it has to be a strong string or cord. Alright, so scissors also, ruler, pencils, salt or vinegar if necessary, that will act as the activator. We're also going to need pots and pans and containers for the water and we're going to need to heat it so we're going to need a heat source such as an iron or a stove you can also use a kettle for this and then of course you have your basin and um, clothes iron if you're going to iron all right so let's check out the items we have our fabric our dye our cord and sharpener just in case the pencil breaks our pencil our scissors to cut the fabric, our pot, our vinegar, salt, pan, and just about everything. So we're going to kick things off by cutting up the fabric. Now, of course, you know you need a ruler. You draw up your boxes. You, I'm using an 8x8 measurement here. I've used 8x8 for all my videos. So just know that you'll always see the measurements for that being 8x8. Alright, so of course you would draw the boxes first and then you start by cutting up the fabric on the lines. Now I'm not going to show you the entire process for that. I've time lapsed this section to ensure that you can see what I'm doing. But at the same time, I'm not going to take too long on it given that I already know you're competent in these areas. So I don't need to show you how to draw a square. Alright, so cut your fabric up. I recommend that you cut extra pieces here because the dye might not work the way you want it to the first time and you may have a challenge with going back to the fabric to cut it up all over again and start over so i recommend that you do a few extra pieces for this section So once you finish cutting up your pieces and you have everything together, you are going to need to wash the fabrics. Now some persons use soap for this part, some persons just use the water only. I normally use soap because it breaks down the barrier better, quicker and remove the, the coating the best. So take your time, wash out the fabrics, don't need to give it a hard wash, just a very basic wash to remove the coating. All right.
finish washing the fabric you would rinse them out and then you would wring them dry and hang them for drying all right one hour later all right so once it's dried you can begin tying or you can press the fabric i recommend that you press the fabric because it's easier to handle when you're doing your folds and your pleats and your tying all right so i recommend that you press it however it's optional if you can get it flat enough to work with no problem so i will be pressing my fabrics all right so the first technique we're going to be looking at is pleating now pleating is very simple it's similar to how we normally make paper fans here in jamaica so you simply fold the paper or sorry you fold the fabric and you alternate by doing so back and forth similar to what you see me doing here you repeat this process until the entire fabric is folded or pleated and then now you begin tying all right so let's watch It's time for you to tie it. Now you sh we should have cut up our cords already, but if you didn't, now is an okay time to do so. All right. So you want to cut up. Um, it's a fair amount of it. It depends on how many areas you want to tie. You can tie anywhere between three to to eight. It depends on how much you can hold on yours and how far apart you want the patterns. I'm going to use about seven, I think. About seven. All right, that should be it. So I cut up my, my strings. It has to be a very strong string so that when you pull on it, it won't give or break. You can also use elastic bands.
so almost finished tying you want to ensure that you get it real nice and tight but not too tight because you want the pattern the, to be created by the dye just seeping in those little little areas so you want to ensure that it's not too tight but you have it firm enough to create the resist so after you're finished just check to make sure all of them are okay and then you get ready for the next technique now you don't have to pleat in one direction you can pleat diagonally or you can pleat vertically you can get a different effect based on the direction that you pleat however whichever you are comfortable with you can try all right or you can even do both it's up to you So now that we're finished with our pleat, it's time for our folding. Now folding can be done similar to the pleat or it can be done in a different way. So we'll basically repeat the same steps for the pleat. However, once we're through pleating, we're going to be folding the fabric in a different way. We're going to alternate with the same pleating pattern and we'll fold it horizontally. So let's see. Once you get to the folding part you want to ensure that it is nice and consistent and even you don't have to fold it the same way I did you can fold it once or twice but it depends on the amount of um, areas that you want to be exposed and the patterns that you want to create all right so the more pleats you have and the more folds you have is the more patterns will be in the fabric so it's really up to you and then you continue with the tying process and ensure that it's properly affixed all right
so here's another folding technique it's not the same format as the other we don't pleat first we just simply fold the fabric up like we do for our sheets or towels all right so that's basically what you're going to do and then just tie it in place now the amount of cards that you use will determine the amount of patterns as well or the areas that the patterns will show so you want to ensure that you do that all right Next technique is clumping. All right, some persons call this ruching, but from what I understand, it's a form of clumping. So we're going to be needing a very long string for this one. So you're gonna to have to cut a very long string, one that you have some length from and you can pull on at the end. Now there are a number of different techniques or variations of this technique as well. Some persons do this by rolling the, the cord in the center and then pulling it from both sides however my approach will be to tie one corner of the fabric and then roll it and pull it from one side so i'm not going to be pulling from both sides for this but you could try the other way as well Once you've completed your roll, what you're going to do is pull the card through as if you're trying to pull it through the entire fabric. Now what will happen is that the fabric will crumple up together and at this point you begin to wrap the excess cord around the tied or the crumpled area. This is to create more resistance between the dye and the fabric to create more patterns.
this one is another technique that we use this one is not going to be done diagonally like the previous one but it is just going to be done from left to right or vertically or horizontally depending on the way that you do your roll so we're not gonna go from one corner to the other but from one side to the other instead so it's basically the same process it's just the rolling that's different you will see the difference in the results after actually my first time doing clamping and I really enjoyed it so for clamping you're going to need some close pins and I didn't tell you that initially but forgive me you're gonna need some close pins all right so get your close pins and begin folding your fabric similar to how you did for the folding now however you fold the fabric it really it's really up to you you can fold it in any pattern or any order that you wish all right I will be doing two variations of the folds and two variations of the clamps which is basically the same thing so we're going to be clamping our clothespins at different ends now we want to ensure that the clothespins are extra firm because we want to create that bright resistance or those bright patterns in the in the design now we want to do this by doubling up on the clothespins because some of the springs might be too weak and don't create enough barrier between the fabric and the die. So double up on the close pins because that's what I will be doing. So you can have a look and let's get to it. finishing up with this one the close pins were a little tight but nonetheless we got through so we're going to move to the next clamping now 
I'm going to roll it up in a different way. I'm going to use back the pleating method for this one. And then I am going to apply the clothespins at varying points. All right. So let's see. is to do the dyeing. Now you should have been heating up your dye in the meantime. If not, it's okay. You can put your pots on now because that's what I will be doing. So I'm putting on my pots with my for my dye. Now based on the brand dye that I'm using, I'm required to apply heat to the dye. However, remember that the instructions for each dye is different as in the quantity, the amount of water, the, the need for a activator or not all right so my dye does not need any activator so i won't be applying any all right so mine requires me to bring the water to a boil so that's what i'm doing and then i will be giving it some time to to boil after which i will be adding my ties or my fabric all right so let's watch and see what happens fabrics in the dye will depend on the pattern that it takes now I always recommend that you put the lighter color first so if you want yellow and blue to be on your design or in your pattern you have to apply it to the yellow first because the yellow is a lighter color and if you put it in the blue first the blue will dominate the color yellow and will change the color to green all right so you put it in the yellow dye first now you can only that you can dye a part of the pattern if you want or you can submerge the entire thing it's really up to you and how you want your patterns to be created all right 
So I'm going to speed it up from here so we can get through this part quickly. Now that one was a little big so I had to get another container and then pour some of the red dye onto it to allow it to you know be able to be submerged so that's something I had to do a little improvision all right so you might have to do the same thing I don't know how big your containers are but if you have a small pot like I did you will have to create that alternative Items in the die depends on the instructions on the die, so that's specific to each die. A few moments later. Now this part of the process is very time consuming, so I will be fast forwarding this. But all you're doing basically is removing the strings or the elastics from the die. You don't have to worry about the the die running onto the, the fresh part of it, it won't happen. You however have to ensure that your fingers are clean and you don't stain the lighter colored dyes with the dark ones, all right? So ensure that it is clean. Try not to cut the fabric as well. Take your time, don't rush, and just enjoy the designs, all right?
few moments later. Alright, so here are the finished pieces. Now, not all of them came out the way I wanted them to, but nonetheless, there were some very interesting patterns coming out. I had to resubmerge a few of them and I had to do over some of them because the pattern that I saw was not something I was satisfied with. So, if you find that happening for you, there is no issue. You can always just resubmerge. After this, I'm going to be trimming the edges and then I will be mounting my pieces. So that's basically it. Alright, so that's it. We're all done for today. And I trust you all enjoyed your patterns. Remember, if you don't like the way it came out, you can always resubmerge or reapply the dye. All right? If it still doesn't work out, just start over. All right? But ensure that you always have excess or extra fabric so that if you make a mistake or you don't like how it comes out, then you can always try it again. Now, the thing about tie-dye and dyeing overall is that well dying overall about dying fabrics overall is that you can't really control the dye 100 percent so some natural patterns have to be created because you can control where the fabric creases but you can't control how it creases you can also control how the fabric is submerged but you can't tell how the patterns will come out depending on how the dye and the fabric enter. There are a number of variables that you can't control. So if it doesn't come out the way you want it to, no problem. Try again. Try a different method. Tie it a little tighter. Tie it a little looser. Submerge it a little longer. There are a number of variables that can cause it not to come out the way you want it to. Even professionals have to do it over. I tried the, the samples more than once for some of them because I didn't like the patterns. I wasn't satisfied with the color combinations. So don't stress yourself too much about it not coming out the way you want it to. Let's try again. All right. Until next time, keep watching, keep having fun, and just make art simple. All right. Bye-bye. All right. So if you have any questions, you can ask it in the comment section down below. No problem with that. Or you can send me an email at Chevron Edwards at gmail.com. Alright, have a good one. Bye bye.